you can of course go to economist.com.na for previous talks on EconoChat. Let's talk business with Mr. Daniel Steinman right here on your power station Energy 100. You can of course also uh, go to the YouTube channel which is YouTube with Namicon, I think. <laughs> I'm, I, I just always search it. Yeah. On uh, go open YouTube and search Number Bay Economist, and then it takes you to Namicon. It takes you right there, so you don't even have to struggle. Uh, so we are talking green hydrogen today. We uh, did uh, elaborate on what it is, what is blue hydrogen, also, and then uh, the question comes in: Why ammonia uh, NH3? But before we we go into that, you did make a note on minus 253 degrees Celsius. It is to do... That's very cold. (laughs) (laughs) So can we just uh, talk a bit about it just before we tap into the question? Why ammonia? Um, If I need to put the bigger picture into context, Mm. I want to state it in very simple terms. Blue hydrogen is dirty hydrogen. We don't want it. Mm. It's also very expensive. Mm. Green hydrogen, so blue hydrogen is the existing hydrogen industry. It's very well established. It's, it's, you find it everywhere in industry across the world, Mm -hmm. whether it's China, America, Europe, South Africa, South America, Japan. The hydrogen industry is everywhere Mm. because it is used in so many, many, many thousands of products. But it's mostly based on blue hydrogen, which leaves this big carbon footprint and which eats up huge amount of electricity. Mm. In itself, not very clean because in Europe, most of that comes from nuclear. Mm. So blue hydrogen, dirty hydrogen, green hydrogen, clean hydrogen mm. but the catch is we don't have green hydrogen yet yes it's only a concept mm-hmm. it exists at this stage only on paper mm. or in in the theoretical side of a laboratory a vision. but it is not prevalent in industry mm. so the whole thing is we want to make certain investments in Namibia through people that are already in the hydrogen industry. They're very serious hydrogen industrial players established. They're already there. Mm -hmm. But they realize if they want to continue and if they want to reduce their carbon footprint, they must find an alternative source of energy. Mm -hmm. And this is where renewables come in. And voila, looking at the map, they saw, ah, there's this country in Southern Africa. And in a place called Luderitz, they've got about 270 days of very strong winds in a year. Mm. And they've got, they're right next to the sea, access to all the water in the world. Remember I said, water is H2O. Mm. There are two hydrogen molecules in, uh, uh, atoms in every water molecule. Mm. So what you need, you need sunshine, lots of it in in the Namib Desert. You need wind. Lots of it near Luderitz, and you need water, lots of it in the sea at Luderitz. Yeah. So this is how the focus shifted to the um, former Spergebiet, the, the Kreichab. Uh, I'm not uh, 100% I'm not sure about the name, the, the, the Nama name, but I think it's Kreichab, that, um, the, that used to be diamond area number one. Okay. And all these... Oh, and also something that they mentioned at the conference, which is very important. Wherever they found suitable spots across the globe, other Mm. parts of the world, the land was a big problem because the land was in private ownership. Mm. And here you come to Namibia Namibia. because of the history with the diamond mining and everything and the protection of the desert. Who's the owner of of the Kreichab National Park? The government. Mm, mm. So you don't need to go talk to to 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 uh, landowners. Mm. You only talk to the government mm. because the government is the landowner of the Namab Desert. Mm. And that was a, a huge deciding factor 
for one of these developers to actually enter into an agreement with the government mm. to start taking this from a pure concept to pre-feasibility and then at a later stage to feasibility. But we are not there yet. Mm. And this is the whole point that I would have been trying to bring across in the last two months, that yes, the hydrogen industry industry itself knows it needs a clean source of energy yeah. because it needs so much electricity. Mm -hmm. The hydrogen industry itself knows that it needs a different source material, mm -hmm. no longer uh, natural gas because of the, the carbon contamination. Mm -hmm. And where do we find all the elements that we need? We find it in a small little backwater 1908 town, a German colonial town in southern Namibia, and it's called Luderitz. Mm. Everything we need is there with this added advantage that where we want to establish the, the solar arrays, you must remember we're talking, uh, they want to cover thousands of hectares on the solar panels huh? and huge factories. Yeah. And pipelines, big pipelines and roads and everything and transmission lines for electricity yeah. as it happened we we scored very well on all the criteria mm. and the overall score, the big score Namibia scored best even better than Australia mm. where conditions are also so that's a, it's yeah. similar yeah. So, so that gave us a green hydrogen industry mm. but you must tell the listeners I'm putting this in in parentheses uh. because it is not there yet mm. as the person involved in the project said it's 10 to 20, 20 year years. project mm. so uh, with that given uh, still touching just quickly before uh, we have to unfortunately say goodbye why ammonia Ammonia is the mixture between nitrogen and, and um, hydrogen, as mm. I said, NH3, mm. meaning in every, so it's nit nitrogen hydroxide or something. Um, if you want to store pure hydrogen, mm. you need to cool it to minus 253 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Okay. To maintain that, that very low temperature, mm. you need 